thanks for having me. I'm one of those beginners who have never been here and otherwise also have no clue. So uh, welcome to my talk called Introduction to Clojure Script and Functional Programming. Uh, this is the outline for today. First, I'll have a little bit of boilerplate, then I'll do uh, a very short introduction to the topics at hand. Then there will be some live coding, which obviously will work. And uh, then I will leave you with a couple more resources if you find the topic interesting, then you can dig in for yourselves. Okay, uh, very little bit about me. This looks uh, gorgeous. We also see some shiny tools. Uh, I'm the CEO of 200 uh, and uh, QuickShift. Uh, both are small companies based in Zurich and uh, Laos. I'm also a lecturer at the local University of Applied Sciences, and I'm an ordained Zen monk and abbot of the London Zen Temple. So uh, I do a couple of different things. But enough about me. Uh, on with the talk. So the topics I'll cover are rather dense, and this is a lightning talk, so there's only 50 minutes to go. However, if something is unclear, please ask questions at any time. Maybe also later. I'll stick around for some time. But before we begin, is there anyone already coding in this magical language called Lisp? I know of at least one. One. One and a half. That's perfect. Huh? Right on. This is cool. Okay, so, uh, well, I'll... Do you code in Clojure? Sort of? Do you code in Clojure by any chance? Uh. Perfect. So you, you are the perfect audience. <laughs> so no one has uh, prior knowledge. And only in these scenarios it makes sense to have a lightning talk about something. Otherwise it will be boring. Okay, so let me uh, start with a, a problem proposition. Uh, software is rather complex. And it's growing more complex at an exponential rate. If you look at statistics, uh, us developers, we are growing at an exponential rate since the 1940s. And obviously we're writing exponentially more and more code. Uh, very often when I look at software, it looks a little bit like this. It's uh, one perfectly fine air ball. It does exactly the job that it's supposed to be doing, but then I want to tweak it. I want to make this thing do something different, and then I plug it in, and it just falls apart. So uh, my problem proposition is the biggest problem today is uh, growing complexity of the dynamic state because applications are doing more and more and they are always stateful. So there is some information in the system about the, the current behavior. And uh, this makes it very hard to reason about the system because state usually is implicit. You cannot see it within the code because, well, at runtime there's stuff happening, right? There might be a database or whatever connected and you don't have it at uh, uh, software developer time available. And then, uh, this is not just me who has this idea, there's actually uh, smart people having this idea. One of them is this guy. He's called Rich Hickey and he's the creator of Clojure. It's a programming language that I will uh, show you in a minute. And he said something in 2008 that stuck with me, and he said, State, you're doing it wrong. Uh, I also have a code source, so it's not a lie. Let me make an easy example. What do I mean by uh, complexity in software? Uh, this is a made up language, but in chance it looks similar to JavaScript. Uh, I'm going to propose that State is hard and we are using the wrong tools to make it less hard. Because what we like to use is, for example, object-oriented programming and usable state. Well, what do I mean by this? Let's look at this uh, easy code, but it's not simple. We have a variable, x, we initialize it with the value of 1, and then we initialize a second variable, y, which is dependent on x, plus 1. So obviously, y has the value of 2, right? We all concur, easy. 1 plus 1 is 2. Now we do something very mean. We change the value of x afterwards, after the fact. Well, and uh, if you're a math person, then you might believe that y should now have the value of 3. Because, well, y is defined as a property 
based on x, but obviously this is not true, right? Who uh, programs in a language where this would be write code, meaning uh, y would be three? No, one. Yes. Huh? Any math people in the room? What are you doing? What language does it? Elm. Elm. Perfect. Okay, so you are in the right talk as well. So he gets it already. So you can uh, have a drink or something. So you're doing it right. <laughs> okay. So the problem here, everyone else says, huh? What the fuck? This is obviously totally easy code, but this is a trivial example. We can re easily read it. Real life code might be hundreds of files, thousands of files, all kinds of modules, different programming languages, different services connected through different uh, interfaces, and all of them have mutable state. So someone changes something somewhere and someone else might have a reference that, which is not in sync anymore. So this mutable state, this is what makes programming hard. And this is also what makes UI development hard. Now I'm uh, taking the pivot to web development. Because if you do something in a web application, like hit a button, well then something happens which updates something, which might update something else, which might, right, you know the drill, there's event-oriented programming, there's MVP, MVC, MVVM, all the good things, and they're all doing it wrong. They are all doing it hard. Let me propose a different approach. Uh, and this approach is not unique to the language that I am uh, showing you in. There is uh, also other good spin-off languages like L, very good language, uh, which do it exactly the same. So I'm going to show you some code, which is written in a language called Clojure. Clojure can run on the server side, where it will compile against Java, but it can also run against uh, the front end against JavaScript, and there is this nice uh, small distinction in the name Clojure and Clojure Script. Well, what is it? First of all, it's a Lisp. Who has never heard the name Lisp before? At least one. All the remaining people of you have heard of it and not yet learned it. Uh, maybe I can uh, put a dent into that. Well, what does Clojure provide? It's first of all a functional language and it has immutable persistent data structures. So inherently, I cannot write code like the one that I've just shown you. It's impossible. It will not accept it. Uh, since it's a list, it has very uh, little syntax. Uh, you know this already, probably, if you know this. It has great tooling, so all the things that are good about IDEs, you can have it. You can use the same language in the front and in the back end. And uh, other smart people, for example, Uncle Bob, that he believes it's the last programming language. You guys know Uncle Bob, right? You are not. I am one of the older people in the room. I uh, see this now. Okay, let me show you the first example of closure code. It's uh, a little alien if you have never seen it because there's parentheses in the beginning of the line. So. This is a fully functional program and it counts the amount of times that the button has been clicked. It's a very simple code. Uh, this is just the boilerplate. This would be like the import of the module that we're using. It's using a library called Reagent, which is built on top of React from Facebook. Then it has uh, one place in the application that holds state. Similar to a database, in a database there is just one state, uh, one place for the state. And then it has a component. It's the same kind of component that you're probably using in your favorite uh, front-end framework, like Google or React or Angular. Uh, just here, it's made up of a function. And this function returns a div, which has some text, and the amount of times that something has been clicked. Just uh, This should just give you like a small uh, intro into what Clojure code looks like. And then I will try to do some actual live coding, and of course, this will go wrong. Okay, uh, since I only have five minutes left, I will skip a couple of things. I created a new boilerplate project, and this here is now a front end application. One of the propositions that I want to show you is uh, just the things that are running. On the left, this is my browser. On the top right, this is my editor. And down on the right, there's a closure and a SaaS compiler running. So whenever I change something in the code, let's make this a fool, and I just hit save, magically it recompiles the code, and I didn't have to go back to the browser 
and hit reload, which you probably have to do in some other languages. So this is already quite nice. There's also, uh, if I make mistakes, if I'm missing brackets or something, it will nicely tell me so. It will tell me there is a missing bracket. If there will be a better resolution, how much delimiter. If I fix it, immediately it will fix it again. All kinds of errors that I can do will be immediately thrown. So if I put, for example, a variable it doesn't know, it will say, well, there's the usage of the undeclared variable ADSF in line 17, easy peasy. Okay, let's make it do something. There's actually two different pages. This is a single page application that has different routes. It has an about route, it has a root route, and at any place I can immediately change stuff. So let's build the dumbest calculator we can build because there's little time. My goal is that there is a number shown and I have an increment up and the number should just uh, increment. So well, uh, let's go to our uh, uh, component and say I want to have a new diff. This is a little bit like React JSX if you know it, but uh, easier because it's pure data. It's not something made up, it's not syntax, this is just a keyword within a uh, list. So let's say this is, and this should be encapsulated maybe in a span, and it shows me uh, the sum of something I call app state, my global uh, database for this application. Obviously, right now it crashes because I haven't defined this magical database yet. So let's do this. I create it once. Once means that even if my browser does immediate code hot reloading, it will not be reloaded because uh, then I would lose my state. This is one of the nice properties of Clojure. So I will initialize this with an attribute called sum and I will initialize it with zero. Okay, so without a reload, now I can see the initial sum is zero. Okay, easy enough. Let's create a button. For example, an incrementation button. I'm calling this new uh, uh, component link button. It has no arguments and it returns a regular uh, HTML button that says increment. If I save it, nothing happens because I have to uh, add it to my uh, application. Okay, so now I have an ink button. If I click it, nothing happens because there is no event handling yet, but now the magic happens. I can say on click, I want to do an immediate function. I want to call a function that says I want to change the state. I'm not going into the DOM and find out, okay, there's a zero, add a one, and then change whatever I want to, I have to change. I will only change like the database on top. Obviously, I have to type it right. I have to say uh, I want to change the current database. I want to change the sum in there, and I want to change it to, well, uh, the current sum of the app state, plus one. I close it now, and I hit increment. Well, this still works. Isn't it nice? And I did never reload. And now for the fun part, I can still change other stuff. And do you see how the state is not lost? I still have the real state here, and this works for large-scale applications. Okay, because time is pressing, I will skip the remainder of my demo. We'll give you a small heads up. Uh, we are also doing the closure meetup in Zurich, and my company is sponsoring that. You are all welcome uh, to come. It's free, of course, regular meetup style. I put a couple nice videos and uh, tutorials for you. I thought to read for you in here if you're interested in these kinds of things. And uh, if you're searching for a job in web development in any kind of role, you can come and talk to me. I have 40 seconds for questions. Any questions? <laughs> yes, please. You mentioned chop just now. Do you want some of your closure or something of the, of the sort? Or, uh, or if I'm searching one for closure people? Yes. No, no, no. Uh, I have closure people. I need other people. <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, experienced uh, old geezers and gals like me. Yes. Is the is the closure uh, uh, transparent into uh, JavaScript? Yes. 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 Uh, yes. This is actually it's uh, cross compiled. Uh, like if you had, uh, you guys probably know this ancient coffee script or the modern TypeScript or any of these things. So it it transpiles it, but uh, 
it transpires it rather nicely. It makes very compact code. In the, uh, in the background, it uses something called Google Closure, mm -hmm. written with an S, not with a J. Very incidental black magic going on there. And it makes very, uh, very nice, small code. Oh. It's better than my pen. <laughs> <laughs> Even for JavaScript applications. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's smaller. Uh, I can do more demos if you're curious. We can do cool stuff, but uh, I think time is up. Right? Yeah, okay. But great job. That's yes. interesting. Thank you so much. A round of applause.